call to order this meeting of the Economic Improvement Corporation. Um, our first item of business is our invocation, and I have asked Jim Wilson if he would lead us in that. Jim. Let us pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many blessings of this day. Father, we ask to bless each member of this board that we may seek to do what is the best for the city of Kerrville, and we endeavor to transact business in your name and only your name. Father, we also ask that everything that we do here today is the glorification, edification, and personification of your kingdom. Mm -hmm. May we exercise and be prudent in these decisions and in all of our efforts as we go forth. We ask all of these things in Jesus Christ, our Savior's name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jim. <coughs> Okay, first up we have the Visitors and Citizens Forum, and any citizen with business not scheduled on the agenda may speak to the Economic Improvement Corporation. No deliberation or action can be taken on these items because the Open Meetings Act requires an item to be posted on, the, on an agenda 72 hours before the meeting. Visitors are asked to limit their presentation to three minutes. Do we have any visitors or citizens who would like to speak? Okay. Item two is the uh, introduction of new members. I want to say welcome to George and to Gary and to Robert. Uh, first and foremost, thank you for your willingness to serve. Um, we, we all look forward to having a, a lot of good um, agreement on things and moving forward in progress for our city. So thanks again for your uh, willingness to serve. Okay, number three is the nomination and election of officers. Um, we, we have a president to elect, vice president, treasurer, and secretary. So at this time, I will um, entertain any nominations. I would like to nominate Kenneth Early as president of this board. I second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Okay, all those in favor, uh, raise your right hand, please. Any opposed, same sign? Okay, motion passes. I think we have to change seats. We do. Next item on the agenda is our or, is the nomination of vice president. I would like to nominate Sheriff Patillo to continue as our vice president. A second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? If none, all those in favor, signal with your raising your right hand. Any opposed? Same signal. That passes unanimously. Congratulations, Thank Sherry. You. You're our vice, vice president. I would also entertain a motion to elect someone as our treasurer or nominate someone as our treasurer. So uh, I will uh, nominate Sandra Yarbrough. I'll second okay. that. We have a motion and a second for Sandra Yarbrough. Anyone uh, have any discussion on that? That's I assume treasurer. Yes. Treasurer. Okay. No discussion? <laughs> All those in favor, signal by raising your right hand. And any against, the same signal. And that is a unanimous uh, vote as well. And so the last one will be the secretary that we will need nominations for. I so nominate Cheryl Brown. I second it. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Since there is none, uh, all those in favor of that nomination, raise your right hand. Any opposed, same sign. And that goes by unanimous vote. All right, next item will be our orientation. And so, I'm not sure who's taking that, I guess Mark is. Mr. Chair, I'll, I'll lead off and then I'm gonna turn it over to EA Hoppy and others to conduct this orientation. First of all, let me uh, welcome uh, all the new members as well as the members that are coming back for the EIC board. If you've got a I have a lot of work uh, ahead in terms of looking at projects, looking at budgets, looking at long-range plans, uh, which we'll talk some more about in a moment. 
Uh, it's, it's a critical time in Kerrville's future, and uh, we appreciate your service. Um, and of course, if there's ever anything that I can do personally, uh, you all can talk, contact me individually. Um, the primary liaison to this board, um, I've appointed uh, E.A. Hoppy, who's the deputy uh, city manager. Uh, but again, uh, you all feel free to contact me as well uh, if you have any questions or uh, things that you might need in, in making your decisions and, and doing your good work. We have a number of staff here today that I want to go ahead and introduce, and forgive me to some of you because you may know these people already, but uh, I want to make sure that everybody does. And you've met Cheryl Brown, who's now your, your recording secretary. She's the assistant city secretary, and she, she works for Brenda Craig, uh, our city secretary who reports to me. Then you have Mike Hayes, and Mike Hayes is going to cover some things tonight for you as well. Mike Hayes is a city attorney who reports directly to the city council, just like I do. I uh, mentioned E.A. Hoppy, who's the deputy city manager sitting over here behind me. Again, he's your primary liaison. Sitting next to him is Sandra Yarborough. She is our CFO uh, and now your treasurer for this board. Uh, who have I missed? We have uh, Caitlin Berry also, who's against the wall over there, who's our public information officer and does a great job for us in that regard. And then we also have with us here uh, uh, Brian, who you're going to meet uh, from our hear from in a, in a moment who runs the uh, Kerrville Economic Development Corporation. He's not a city staff member. He reports to a separate board, but he is a partner uh, with economic development. We appreciate uh, all the good work that he does. With that, uh, Mr. Chair and Board, I'm going to turn it over to EA, who's going to begin uh, covering some of the material uh, for your orientation. EA? just going to go over some quick logistics here, uh, and then I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Hayes. Uh, to go into some of the legalities and a little bit more of the, the basis uh, for the board from state law perspective as well as the local ordinances that uh, have put it in place. So uh, this board, this group meets on the third Monday of every month. So the next, I just provided uh, the remainder of the meetings through the remainder of this fiscal year. Uh, this uh, uh, commission does operate uh, on the city's fiscal year, which is October 1 through September 30th. So we have meetings uh, slated for you guys on July 17th, August 21st, and September 18th. We, of course, always reserve the right to uh, connect with you guys, and if necessary, for any special called meetings. I'm not going to go into open records and open meetings, because I think Mike's going to touch base on that a little bit more. Uh, sometime in that, uh, those three dates, uh, we are working with uh, Brian and some representatives from TEDC uh, to have them uh, come down and provide uh, some of the uh, Texas Economic Development uh, group, the actual training that they provide uh, to this whole group. So uh, we'll be looking probably in the August time frame is what we're looking at right now. I just want to give you guys an update on that. So with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Hayes. Well, good afternoon. Uh, hopefully you all have um, a couple sheets of paper that I'm going to go over. Um, some of you have heard this before. Uh, this is the first time I think we've done an orientation in this manner. Um, but what I did was um, prepared a, a or orientation um, couple sheets uh, that I'll start with and then I'll refer to um, kind of a list that I keep that defines your projects and, and, and um, those uh, funding mechanisms that, that you all under the law can legally fund. So with that, um, and, and feel, certain, feel free to stop me at any point um, because what, what I'm trying to do is not get in the way of kind of your more important um, activities this afternoon. Um, but with respect to the creation and powers of the EIC, uh, you all are a nonprofit corporation. It's a separate entity from the city. Um, we filed the, the articles of incorporation with the Secretary of State, and you have bylaws, and the bylaws have been amended um, several times. Um, you're not a political subdivision of the state, uh, which is part of uh, what the law defines you as. Um, you're not public officers. Um, you, you'll refer to yourselves at times referred to as a 4P, uh, 4B corporation, and that comes right out of um, state law, the state statute that was originally adopted in, um, I believe, 1979. Um, now it's a type B just because that law has been shifted over into the code. So what I think you'll mostly hear now is a type, you, you all are a type B corporation as opposed to a type A corporation. Uh, the purpose, which is found right there in the, in the state statute, is to support economic development for the city. You're funded through a, a dedicated local sales tax, which is a half of a penny. 
Um, at, at some point, you all were approved uh, way back when by the voters of this community uh, pursuant to a, uh, a vote. EA uh, referred to this earlier. You must consist of seven members. That's state law. Uh, you have two-year terms, and you must be a resident. Um, that's interesting to note, I think. And um, at least three of you must not be council members or city officials. And so, in other words, you all could have uh, four council members. Uh, they could have appointed four council members. They could have appointed the city manager. Um, I've seen that done before. But in, in, um, in any event, you can't have more uh, than four of those. Uh, you do have tort liability protection pursuant to the uh, Texas Tort Claims Act. Uh, I know that's always kind of a question that I'm asked. Um, and so that's right out of the Texas Tort Claims Act. Yes, so the Open Meetings Act and the Public Information Act applies to your activities. That's uh, out of the law. And so this is interesting to note with respect to the Open Meetings Act. I think what's a meeting? It's a quorum of yourselves uh, where you all would deliberate about public business, the business that comes before you. Um, I'll note that email can be considered a meeting if you all get an email, which you all will get from time to time from staff, particularly Cheryl. If um, I would just caution you and urge you actually not to reply all, um, because if you do that, um, at times that can, you know, that starts uh, flurrying about, and um, I believe that could actually be a, a, a meeting, a virtual meeting, but a meeting nonetheless in the, in the sense that you're having uh, electronic deliberations among a quorum. Um, I bring up social gatherings. Sometimes you'll find yourselves perhaps at a social gathering and maybe even a corner with um, more than a quorum. I just urge you to be very, very cautious of that and certainly not talk about uh, any business that might be coming before you. At times you can avail yourselves uh, to executive closed session, which we do um, occasionally. That's to seek legal advice or to actually talk about and deliberate uh, commercial or financial information. Um, the public discussion of, of which you all would consider might be harming your negotiations. Um, and so uh, the EIC does that from time to time. I'll note about executive session, no actions can be taken in executive session. So in other words, if, we, if you all go in there to negotiate um, a project agreement, you all would have to bring that agreement basically out of executive session and vote on it in open session. There are civil and criminal penalties um, that apply to violations of the Open Meetings Act. Uh, the Texas Public Information Act, that's not as, as, as big of an issue for you all. What, what, what's important there is if you make notes, uh, I would just hand those over to the extent that you don't need those after meetings, hand those over to Cheryl and she'll maintain those because we do have to retain those. Um, record is very broadly defined um, and this is what I tell council. Uh, don't create records at home, and if you do, um, just make sure you give them to Cheryl. Um, I would do, I don't know if they're going to get emails through the city. We've done it, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if we'll do emails, you'll get a city-issued email. If, if you do have that, I would just do all of your emailing through that um, email address. So in other words, we collect it, we retain it here through our server. Um, I wouldn't use personal email for anything with respect to the EIC because when you do that, you um, arguably can open up your computer or your personal device um, to, um, um, uh, to, to the public. Um, so uh, I would be very cautious in creating electronic um, emails or information, which is obviously so easy to do in this time and age. Uh, but when you do that, just make sure you do that through the city's server, um, because otherwise, again, you open it up to um, your, your personal um, your personal devices open up to public. Yes? Excuse me, Mike. So are you saying we're going to get, I mean, I know council has a city email, but we have historically on this board have not yeah. had, a, had a city email. Are we? You've had one in the in within the last year. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't I know how we'll do that. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Everybody else got one. Yeah. yeah. Just, just <laughs> In terms of what I remember, you all were the only other board besides council that had a, a city-issued email address. So, 
we'll, we'll clarify that and um, uh, get that out to you. Thank you. Just kind of continuing on, uh, you do have to be careful at times, you know, if kind of the art of the deal, if you are, are pondering kind of deal points that you want to see in a, in a project uh, contract, um, I would just be very careful to maintain that, that confidence because once it's, it's, it's the proverbial, once it's out of the barn, it's out and, and we can't really go back and try to collect it. Um, sometimes I, I do get, or the city does get um, requests for information with respect to um, your negotiations or perhaps you all have, have received um, information from a company that's looking to locate here. We could we could withhold that from public disclosure um, to the extent that we haven't released it yet, but I've got to go ask the AG um, for authority to do that. Um, just like the uh, Open Meetings Act, there are criminal penalties that um, apply to the Public Information Act. Um, going on to the second page, it's interesting to note the, the conflict of interest statute that's applicable, that's in state law that applies to council uh, for sure does not apply to you all, um, which doesn't mean that, that we shouldn't be concerned about that uh, because there is a nonprofit corporation act um, conflict of interest and it's just a little bit of a lesser standard in my mind and what that means is if you believe you have a conflict of, inter conflict of interest, you certainly need to disclose it to the EIC and I've had members do that before. Um, hey, I've been a part of this bank and, and they've been part of the financing or, and I'm not picking on you, Kenneth, but that, that's just what has come to mind. Um, so as long as you disclose it and we talk through it, um, that's the way to do that. But it is, I, I will note that the conflict of interest statute does not apply uh, to the EIC. Um, okay, you, you all, uh, you know, are oftentimes wrapped up in uh, projects. Um, you must have a, a, a public hearing um, before you provide funding and, and part of that public hearing is we also go through a, a, a public notice and so we'll put uh, we'll, we'll notify the public of that public hearing through the newspaper um, You can do projects that are outside located outside uh, The city that are in the county, but when we do that um, We have to go get county approval uh, from the commissioner's court and in my time here I think we've had to do that one time. I can't remember. I can't remember the I think it was the shooting sports center. So we had to go to the county and get permission. Yes, sir. When you say county approval for the project itself or for the funding for it? For the, it, it's, it's strange. They just have to approve the project and okay. that's all they do. They don't look at the terms and anything like that. They just, it's, it's kind of like, a, oh, okay, you're gonna be providing funding into kind of our jurisdiction. Okay. Um, and so, again, there is a public notice, and then part of that is to make sure uh, the public is aware of the right to petition the project, and, and you can petition the specific project, and that's the right to gather a petition um, that must be submitted in 60 days um, of the first published notice. So we published the notice in the paper, and from that point on, the clock has started for the 60 days. And if we get a uh, petition, uh, which is greater than 10% of the registered voters, we would have to uh, put that project actually on, um, up for a vote um, and for approval that way. Um, type B, and again, type B is opposed to type A. Type B may spend its sales and use tax revenue on any project authorized for type A. Um, the type A projects are primarily wrapped up in this definition of primary jobs and so they're looking to uh, create or retain primary jobs um, and so that's a, that's a good bulk of the uh, projects but for type B there's other categories uh, for the expenditures uh, including recreational community facilities like public parks, the river trail for instance uh, and I've given you a project list um, that I've put together and, and quite frankly I use that so when staff comes to me and says, you know, we're gonna go ask uh, EIC for funding for them to consider funding for, for this project, you know, the first thing I do is I match that up with a project definition. Um, and then what you all will see is, is if you approve for that project to come forward, you'll see in the whereas is the, the recitals that I really cite that section that you all are using for that specific project. Um, 
But again, is it, and if you've got any questions on any of those, the, the, the project list, um, just let me know. The costs for 4B projects are, um, it's a very general term, it's a very broad term, uh, but in, it includes land and facility improvements, uh, basically the cost of acquisition, construction, the actual improvement, um, expansion of the land, buildings and acquisitions right away, um, certainly the machinery and supplies. Um, we did that for one of the Fox Tanks projects. They wanted uh, an extra piece of machinery and we funded um, that. Um, you can include financial transactions, which cost of financing can be included. Um, the planning, you can pay consultants and planners um, for their cost with respect to the research and development, um, engineering and legal services, for instance, um, development of plans, specifications, et cetera. Um, and then other expenses necessary or incident to determining the feasibility um, and practicability of undertaking the project. And so you have a lot at your disposal that you can use funding for to, to basically make sure that um, a project in, in your mind is uh, worthwhile. And of course you can also use uh, your money for administrative expenses and you do have an administrative services contract uh, with the city that you all will enter into. Um, that goes uh, fiscal year to fiscal year. Um, performance agreements, and those are the project contracts. That's actually required by law, um, and that's to make sure that y you all ensure that the funds are used what they're um, intended to be used for. And what we've really tried to do, uh, certainly in the last five, ten years, is to make t the, the better way to do these things is um, for you all to enter into a, uh, a project contract with someone, they spend the money and then they submit invoices and receipts and then we review all that to ensure that they've spent it on appropriate costs. Um, and that's certainly, the, in, in my mind, the, the better way to do that in terms of insurances. Um, oversight of the 4B, and you'll see there, council must um, approve all projects and so you all will enter into a, a project agreement, and that, that agreement will actually go to council for their review and approval. Um, they, because they have to review the project, they have to re review and um, approve all expenditures. They actually approve your budget, which is called for in the law, and they certainly have access to your uh, books and records. Um, basically, you know, your powers at all times are subject to council uh, review. Um, and they, they have the authority to alter your structure and, and your bylaws, which they have done um, a few times. So, all that to say, that was very quick, kind of a, a legal issue overview. Yes, sir. Just a question. Mm -hmm. is, is all the debt issued through the city of Kerrville and it's just guaranteed uh, by the U.S. for these projects? You know, the EIC itself, is this ever issued? Back in 99, they issued debt for major improvements, and then after that was paid off, they have since just guaranteed it and issued through the city, and it cuts down on issuance cost, disclosures, and things of that nature that you don't have to pay extra. Thank you. Okay. Moving on. All right. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Mike. As Mike mentioned, uh, the EIC does have an administrative services contract with the city. That contract uh, provides engineering and project management for the projects that you move forward. Uh, the uh, legal, uh, legal fees for Mike services, uh, certainly financial and administrative uh, services for Sandra and Cheryl. Uh, uh, Sandra's shop also uh, assists the corporation with uh, investments of funds, uh, the annual audit, uh, and then staff provides, a uh, multitude of staff provide project reports as well as the staff, uh, staff uh, uh, the, uh, reviews the application reports. Um, KDC also has a service agreement with the EIC uh, as well as with the city, and I'd like to bring uh, Mr. O'Connor up to uh, further brief the corporation on those elements. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, we also have uh, contractual agreements with KBUB, and we also have uh, with the county as well. Uh, if I may, I'm going to pass out a little handout for you, which was simply, there's two there, which was through internal strategic planning section that uh, KEDC Board of Directors had. It identifies goals and objectives that we had for the next 18 months. Where the check mark is, uh, I'm happy to say it's actually been addressed. Uh, and where the circle is, that's really kind of our ongoing process. So uh, I, I'm more than happy to entertain questions on that. Uh, just as a little point of a background, that the KDC is your economic development arm for the city and for the county as well. We do business recruitment, we do marketing, we provide statistical data, uh, we will research policy, uh, you know, uh, look to broaden our economic development toolkit, uh, we'll do your outreach uh, through our website, through, uh, you know, the specific marketing materials that we develop in-house. We've identified five different targeted industries. Uh, this is ongoing through the KEDC, but they had identified aviation and aerospace as one of our targeted industries, energy, uh, craft agriculture, uh, hotel conference center, and also light manufacturing and assembly. And those are the type businesses that we've been going after since I got here eight months ago. Uh, we really do follow lo the local government code, Chapter 501, that really kind of defines the type of jobs that we end up trying to cultivate within this community, which are primary jobs. And by definition, a primary job is available at a company for which a majority of the product or service of that company are ultimately exported to a regional, statewide, national, or an international market which infuses new dollars into the local economy. economy. So uh, we really do focus on manufacturing. Uh, as uh, the city attorney had alluded to, 4B sales tax can address other issues, i.e. quality of life issues. But those aren't the type of projects that the KEDC typically engages in. We're the primary jobs, we're the bricks and mortar, we're the investment and so forth. And part of the vetting process, which is on the second page of that handout, uh, that's the go team process. And what happens is we run through that vetting process and ultimately, as an applicant completes the, uh, the application process that was actually developed through the EI, EIC, the city and the KDC cooperatively, we're gonna end up with certain numbers. Now what we end up doing with those numbers is we contract out an analysis for an independent third-party agency that really does a financial analysis to find out what the economic impact of this prospect coming into the community is and also what the return on investment is. So if we're, if according to a matrix, let's say they qualify for $500,000 worth of public subsidy through the EIC, we're gonna let you know what the return on investment is, that is in terms of base wage rate, the new technology that it may bring in, uh, the type of real property improvements that are gonna be made, and the machinery and equipment. So, like I said, once again, we're all about bricks and mortar for the most part. Uh, our board is a very good cross-representation of this community, it really is. Uh, it's nine members, it represents city, county, EIC, uh, Convention and Visitors Bureau, we also have the Chamber of Commerce. We have two business representatives, so we do have private business on there, uh, and uh, KPUB, and also the, uh, uh, the KISD, uh, the school district. So when we actually vet a project, I mean, we can really look at it from a lot of different perspectives, community-wide, and I would say it's a very comprehensive approach. Uh, Naturally, we're always looking to, to how we can better address the needs of the business community. Some of the issues that we always work on on an ongoing basis is workforce development. Uh, I had mentioned that uh, 
last month and uh, the brief presentation that I did before the board. Uh, our industrial property inventory, it's something that we're always trying to look to expand and maybe even doing something on a spec basis. And, and that's something uh, that we'll continue to have ongoing discussions on. And then again, our economic development toolkit, how can we better leverage some of the fixed money that we have? Typically through the EIC, we'll end up uh, doing grants uh, or maybe tax abatement. Uh, we as a board have been talking about how can we better leverage funds? Can we bring the banking community into some of these deals more? How can we use the SBA? How can we chase the governor's office and maybe uh, uh, qualify for tax, uh, Texas capital fund money and so forth? So we're always looking at how we can better leverage our funding. Uh, you know, typically, the EIC provides substantial support. I mean, you probably support us uh, uh, about 71% of our operating budget. About? As, I'm sorry? About 71%. Act, actually, uh, exactly 71%. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you, it is very important that I keep this board informed. Uh, I'm looking forward to developing the relationship in terms of how you want project updates to be able to come to you. I mean, of course, you can have a, a representative on the uh, KDC board, but I'm more than happy at, at your request to be able to come and provide updates in whatever format that may be. Very good. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, thank you. Thanks, Brian. Thank, thank you, Brian. Thanks, Brian. I'm just going to fly through these next few slides because I think we've touched on uh, a couple of different elements. We have talked about Go Team already. Um, generally, EIC and economic development, I just want to kind of paint a picture for you guys that EIC is one component of the city's economic development toolbox. It's not the only component. Certainly, community assets uh, are a big part of what bring businesses and primary jobs and people looking to, to move to this area. And those community assets are everything from the Guadalupe River to Shriner University to uh, the streets and infrastructure that we have. Uh, and infrastructure is a really big component of it. Uh, a lot of folks don't recognize that infrastructure is, a, is an economic development tool but the reality is that most businesses need roads and they need water and they need sewer and and those are all really critical components in addition to our other larger infrastructure like parks and recreation uh, quality of life type components in our school district uh, 4b sales tax that's where you guys come in chapter 380 which provides uh, applicability for both sales and property tax abatements hotel and motel tax is certainly big especially in a, a tourist uh, driven area uh, such as our own uh, tax increment financing, public improvement districts, you go on and on and on. Uh, Brian spoke to some of those before. But there, there's a large array of toolbox. EIC is one component of that, a very important part of that. Funding partners, um, certainly we get uh, not a lot of direct federal dollars, but some that flows through the state. Uh, some that flows through state agencies such as uh, TxDOT and other folks. Uh, the state of Texas, uh, as uh, Brian mentioned earlier, uh, has uh, various funding structures that seems to change about every legislative session. They'd like to relabel something else, uh, but certainly uh, Brian works closely with those guys and leveraging as, as many dollars as we can. Uh, Kerr County and then other local municipalities depending on, on the scale of the project. EIC project types, as Brian mentioned before, there's really three uh, key project types uh, that this group uh, has the purview over. Uh, direct contributions to business development, uh, and those are, again, those primary jobs in the target areas uh, that Brian mentioned. Participation in public infrastructure and quality of life projects. Brian mentioned a little bit of the application process, and I want to distinguish uh, a little bit of difference between, <clears throat> excuse me, the business development projects and the public infrastructure and quality of life projects, where typically the city is the applicant for those projects. Not always, but typically. So on a business development project, the review process, an application is made, and that is received and reviewed uh, by Brian at the KDC then goes to the GO team for review. If it's found to be feasible, it goes to KDC board for recommendation. Then that application is directed, uh, the, the application part 
uh, it is directed to this group. You guys review it. If you decide that it should move forward, then you provide direction to staff. Uh, we will begin preparing that, and then we set a public hearing time. You will review the actual funding agreement, separate than the application, but the actual funding agreement that's been drafted by Mike, uh, and you hold that public hearing. Uh, if it, that funding agreement is then approved, then that goes to city council for their review and the final approval of the funding agreement. A little bit different on the public infrastructure quality of life projects. Uh, those go directly to city council for approval uh, of, the, of making a funding request to this group. We then bring it to you. Uh, you direct us to uh, or not to make a funding agreement. We will, staff will prepare that funding agreement. We bring it back to you uh, to hold the public hearing uh, and for your approval. And then that goes to council for their final approval. So just a little bit of distinguish there. I uh, just wanted to kind of run you through the, the bureaucracy of the process. Budget and current financials. I'm going to let Sandra Yarbrough know, take over from here. I want to talk to y'all first about your budget. If you'll get your spreadsheet out on that, we always set it up on a. Plan. Give y'all just a moment to look at it. You don't have one in your packet. Is it? You direct us to it. Is it in this book? Yes. It should be tab six or seven. Oh, okay, I think it's seven. By the way, y'all can follow along. Six. Tab six. Okay. Not a problem. Got it. It's on the last page. In the um, first column there, of course, it's your current year budget. And we break it down in detail as much as we can so you can see where the different money is going under your different um, categories. We have your business development, quality of life, and your infrastructure. And so we detail it out quite often during the year. Y'all will change the direction of the projects, and so we'll make those adjustments. Then we have projected out the next five years, <coughs> excuse me, on your debt service, on your anticipated <coughs> revenue of your sales tax and your interest coming in or any transfers that may be made. We budget annually for a $500,000 ED set aside so that if a big project comes along down the road, y'all want to invest in and we move those monies over at the end of every year so it accumulates a total. And you'll see down at the very bottom in the little black, black bar what is accumulated so far. They started this about three years ago and it's accumulating as we go. Do I have any questions so far on that? Okay. Uh, in the year seven and the year 18, we do have some things extended out. These are some of the projects that have been talked about in the past by EIC board. So we've gone ahead and plugged those in and that would be like under your, for an example, tennis center. It's a two-year project that came before y'all before. Also, the uh, distribution lines came to that before, before y'all earlier this year that you split funding in one year and funding in the other year. So those are some things y'all need to take in consideration when we go into the budget process. The rest of these are just some things that have been talked about in the past and are subject to being discussed in your budget process coming up in the next month. I don't have any... 750000 for example, in, in 2018 has not been funded, it's just projected. In the agreement, it was said to fund half of it in this current year and half in next year. So the total amount is 1.5. They're doing 750 and 17 and 750 and 18. Okay. And it's committed, correct? And that's committed, so every, yes. Everything in that column is committed. Singing we have not um, brought an agreement to y'all for the singing wind or the Guadalupe Park and, and improvements. Uh, those two are still pending, but the others we do have agreements for. Any other questions on that? Okay, if not, I'm going to go ahead and go into y'all's uh, financial report for ending of May, and that should have been in your agenda packet. It's not in the agenda packet? Okay. You just have the one budget sheet. Uh, this, this is your cash flows and so things. We just have this sheet. We don't have 
no, you don't have that sheet. She, did, she didn't put that in there. Okay, ending May 31st, you're beginning cash balance in your operating fund. Y'all have two funds, operating and a capital projects fund. Your beginning cash was $2,592,494. During the month of May, you had income of $310,552. You had expenses of $601,000. $211, leaving you a cash balance in your operating fund of $2,301,835. Uh, I will get y'all a copy of this financial report. Typically on the second page is the detail of your budget and that, ref that reflects back to the spreadsheet that you have there. It shows your annual budget, the activity for the current month, your year-to-date expenditures, and your remaining budget. That's for your operating fund. We have a spreadsheet that we include in this report. It shows your um, sales tax for the month of May and your year to date. And at this time, 2017 compared to 2016 is at 5.5% over last year and at 1.99 year to date of budget. In your capital projects fund, this is where after y'all have approved a project, we move the cash over there so when you're seeing your operating fund, you know what's in your operating fund and you don't spend it twice. So your, your opening cash for the month of uh, being at beginning of May, you have $3,727,211. We transferred in the $500,000 for, for the ED set aside for this month and we transferred out for your capital projects, for your, for your Olympic pool, your tennis center, and your distribution lines of $2,350,000, leaving you an ending balance of $1,877,211. Then the following page of that is a breakdown of y'all's projects that y'all have funded and the status of those at the time. And we do a summary at the bottom on what is left remaining on the river trail project since y'all are the funding mechanism for that. So we keep y'all a running total of that. And our last page on here is your cash and investments. It shows how much your cash is in your operating your, and your capital projects and how much is in the checking account portion of y'all's money and the rest of it is in investments, which is investment pools. So it's liquid and if you need it, we can transfer it very easily. But meanwhile, it's earning you interest. Have any questions about that so far? So Sandra, if any of our our members have a question of finances, are they available? Are you available to speak with them? Absolutely. Yes. On a phone call mm -hmm. basis. Very good. Okay. Cheryl's passing you out the report that I just went over. Um, we have just um, got an account set up separately for y'all at Wells Fargo of a checking account. We have reduced your checking portion or your cash portion down to $10,000. The rest of it is in investments in a pool so we can transfer as we need it and that way you make more interest. Uh, Y'all have done quite well on interest this month, I mean this year, and we anticipate that it'll continue to grow by being able to manage your funds better for you. Okay. Very good. Any other questions? Thanks, Sandra. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Sandra. You, Sandra. As Sandra mentioned, we'll be bringing you guys uh, proposed budgets here uh, over the next uh, month or two and be working through that process with you. So more to come on that. I uh, just wanted to quickly go through, instead of doing our traditional uh, project update, uh, just kind of reiterate a little bit of the history, uh, talk through some of the current projects, and then also uh, some upcoming projects that, that uh, we think will be coming before you uh, over the next half a year. Um, past projects, certainly James David Craftsman, a uh, uh, big success story, uh, added hundreds of jobs with a new facility there along Highway 27. Uh, Fox Tank, right next door to that, uh, also uh, has added jobs to uh, this economy. Kerrville Sports Complex uh, was a, a, a quality of life project that is underway right now. Uh, sod is on the ground. Uh, we've got grass coming up. Uh, that project is really 
coming along uh, nicely and on budget and on time. River Trail Project, uh, as you recall, maybe from last month, uh, we are in the uh, design engineering phase of uh, that western portion of that project. Uh, but it is uh, moving along. We're right in the middle of that engineering piece. They're doing survey work and some other things. Uh, reuse distribution, we are in the middle of construction on that project. Uh, downtown Streetscape, we did just get the presentation from uh, Mr. Lewis. Uh, we anticipate that uh, going in front of council here over the next couple months to, to let them weigh in as well uh, on some of those design efforts. And then Tennis Center Renovation, we did get a very strong response from uh, various uh, representatives for that design engineering project. Uh, we're hoping to bring that forward to council to authorize us to negotiate uh, with the highest, highest qualified bidder uh, at the next council meeting. So uh, everything's moving quite along. Uh, potential upcoming projects, uh, as Sandra mentioned earlier, aquatics feasibility study is in your uh, uh, current fiscal year budget uh, to move forward. So we'll be looking to get council to authorize us to come talk to you some more about that at the next council meeting. Uh, we have uh, had uh, an application that we'll be moving forward uh, with uh, uh, the GO team. Uh, in regards to the community garden, we understand that a, a separate uh, application is being developed for the Doyle Community Center. Uh, Arcadia, certainly we've had some discussions on that. Uh, we are continuing that, uh, that dialogue. Uh, we think that we'll be uh, moving forward with an application uh, in, in the near term if it has an EIC component. Um, certainly uh, airport, uh, a big uh, economic driver in our community. Workforce housing has been uh, a strong uh, uh, component for this group uh, and then wastewater infrastructure we, we do anticipate uh, potential uh, for coming to you guys over the next year to talk about some some opportunities there so with that I will share unless there's any questions for me sir any questions nope. thanks EA thank you all right next item on the agenda will be the appointment of an EIC representative to the Kerr Economic Development Corporation. Do I have a nomination? I'd yes, like to move uh, Mr. Cooper, motion for Mr. Cooper to be on that, representative of the Kerr Economic Development Corporation. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I think I would like to, to consider the possibility, nothing against you, Gary, <laughs> um, of, of Kenneth, just based on your historic, um, the number of years that you've had um, representing EIC, because you had a four-year term prior, plus what you have now. So um, I know your work background is really strong, uh, Mr. Cooper, but um, just thinking about the history that you have on a lot of the projects, I think that might be something worth considering. I think it's, it's always... Uh, better if we have the president of the EIC on that board. And that's been historically what we've done. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm not going to vote that way. Let me, let me make one comment and leave it at that. But basically, um, my thought behind seconding the motion was basically, historically, you, you have done with the president and all well and good. Um, however, m my thinking was to actually Put different set of eyes on this app, this operation, and uh, so that was my thinking behind actually nominating someone who doesn't have a history behind EIC necessarily, but has a background that's um, certainly in the in the ballpark of what EIC does and what KEDC will be doing, which is essentially what we're doing, right? Appointing somebody to KEDC, correct? So, anyways, that was just my thoughts behind it. So. I felt the same way that uh, new board and uh, sometimes having a different set of eyes look at projects um, couldn't hurt. But that's so I'll stay with my motion. Again, nothing personal, Gary, but uh, I think I would feel more comfortable with someone who uh, has been around for some time and knows what is going on and doesn't have to do a lot of research to keep up with the status of the city. All right. Any further discussion? We do have a motion and a second on the floor. So all those in favor of the motion at hand, signal by raising your right hand. All those that do not approve that or are not in favor of that, please signal the same way. So that motion does not carry. 
I want to nominate Kenneth Early, our president, to serve uh, on that board because he has served as president of many boards and he is well qualified and knows all the people on that board, knows the workings of this city. No second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? No further discussion. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Any opposed? Same sign. That motion carries. All right, on to item number six, which is the appointment of an EIC representative to the GO team. I nominate James Wilson to continue as our uh, representative to the GO team. I a, second that. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All right, all those in favor of the motion, signal with your right hand. Any opposed? And that motion carries as well. All right, um, let's see. On to business, uh, item number seven is the approval of the minutes. And it looks like we have two sets of minutes, one from, uh, I'm not sure what, that's May the 15th. Um, and then a special meeting uh, on May the 25th. So each of you have a copy of those minutes. I would entertain a motion for approval. I right. so motion. A second. motion and a second. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Any opposed like sign? That motion carries that the minutes be approved. All right. Do we have any executive session need today? If not, let's no. move on to item number nine, which is in which would have come from executive session since we didn't have one, that one's completed. And then any items for future agendas? I hear none there. Any announcements? And I hear none there. So before we adjourn, I would like to welcome Gary, Robert, and George to the board and appreciate your service to the city. And I would congratulate those who have been nominated to new positions by this board and uh, appreciate your service in those areas as well. All right. So I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I so move. Second. Motion and a second. And all those in favor, stand up and leave. <laughs> We're done. That's right. Thank you.